Well, there it is, the sight you did not want to see, the aftermath of the SN9's launch and failed landing attempt. Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to be taking a look at SpaceX's second time launch on a Starship, the SN9. What went wrong with that? News they're giving us about it, and also what SpaceX has in store for tomorrow for their Falcon 9. So be sure to stick to the top so if you want to know all about that. And be sure to click the like button. It helps me out a ton and lets me know you guys like this content. But let's talk about what happened yesterday. So the SN9, as you guys all know, it finally, after weeks of being delayed, finally did its hop test. Now I have a great photo I found um, explaining exactly in the photo what really happened. So what happened? It launched, of course. It did its 10 kilometer altitude. It got to the 10 kilometers, so that was a success. On its way down, it did the belly flop, another success. So at this point, it did exactly what the SN8's already done. So this is exactly what we were already expecting it to do. The key here in this mission was for it to land. SN8, as you know, didn't land the SN9. It's supposed to land. SpaceX seemed pretty confident in correcting what had gone wrong the first time. Now, as you can see from this, on its way down, it actually overcorrected itself and landed at a 45 degree angle and exploded upon impact. So what went wrong? As of right now, what we know is that one of the three Raptor engines actually did not reignite when it was supposed to on its way back down. This is the same thing that happened with the SN8. The SN9 had the same exact problem. We figured that that would have been corrected. SpaceX clearly didn't do something right. Now I'm curious to hear what you guys say in the comments. Let me know why you think something else could have gone wrong. Here's my opinion. I have This is just purely speculation from a non-engineering standpoint, just more or less, I guess, a common sense standpoint. If you don't remember, the SN9, when it was in the high bay, it tipped over, for one. So that could have caused some internal damage, very slight internal damage that you really wouldn't notice. The other thing that happened was, during its static fire test, the first ones it did, if you guys don't remember, they had to replace two of the Raptor engines because damage had been caused during the static fire tests. I'm genuinely curious, not confused, curious, and like I said, you guys let me know in the comments, I think that the Raptor engine swapping with the SN9 had to do with this. I don't think it was more of a software problem. Again, I could be wrong. I don't think it was a software problem or something like that. I think when they went to swap these engines out, the work that they did, they may have opened a can of worms and caused more damage than good. Granted, they had to do it. The original engines were damaged, so I, I understand why exactly they had to swap the engines. But nevertheless, I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that the engine swapping wasn't what caused it, because if that's the case, then there's nothing for SpaceX to correct. And that's what you don't want. You want SpaceX to find things that they can correct moving forward. So I'm hopeful that I am wrong. I'm hopeful and that it did have to do with maybe a software issue or a piece of equipment that just wasn't designed right, something like that. Like I said, in the comments, I want to hear what you guys think, why you think this didn't go properly. The SN10 apparently is scheduled to launch more towards the end of the month. However, I'm hopeful it will actually be sooner than that. If SpaceX has everything clear with the FAA that they recently did, I know the FAA is still investigating them for reasons I explained in my last episode. I think if they're staying up to date with them and they're properly communicating with them, it's considering that SN10 is already out on its launch pad, I think we can see the SN10 launch much sooner than that. Maybe two weeks from now, one week from now? I know the SN11, the SN12, those things are very close to completion. SpaceX, before the SN9 even launched, they were working all the way up on SN17. So there's no... There's no delay, there's no lack of having starships ready to go. It's more or less finding out what went wrong, making sure the FAA is on cahoots with SpaceX, and they're going to keep launching these guys. Also in the news for SpaceX, tomorrow, Thursday, February 4th, SpaceX will be doing its Falcon 9 launch of the Starlink satellites. They have 60 of these going into orbit. They were supposed to do it this previous Saturday. It kept getting postponed only because of weather conditions. Now, for them to launch, the weather really doesn't need to be that favorable, with these rockets they've done it plenty of times the problem is when it lands when these boosters land they're going to be landing on a drone ship out in the ocean that's already swing slightly as it is and if there's too much wind they don't want that to be the reason that it tips over this thing and blows it up then they have a damaged launch drone pad and they lose a booster as you know the whole goal of spacex is reusability having these drones and not the drones i'm sorry but the boosters continuously going and to not have to spend money to build new ones. So I understand why they're cautious with this. 
only thing I don't like about it is it delays more missions, but it, it's what you have to do, unfortunately. It's the unfortunate thing about this business is you are heavily reliant on weather. And one more thing I want to talk to you guys about, more content about this channel. I'm going to start doing episodes as well, not just about SpaceX and space, but also about EVs. It's something I've been wanting to talk about more and more. I just haven't gotten around to it. And with the recent growth in my channel, a lot of you guys want more SpaceX content. And I've also gotten you guys, when I put in the comments, things like that, people saying you would also like the EV content. So watch out for that. There's going to be EV content talking about the news regarding certain electric vehicle startups, Tesla, big companies, big names in the industry, as well as small names and the small business transactions that are going to be happening. It's a growing industry. There's a lot of news to cover about it, so I'm excited to talk about it, and I know a lot of you guys want it as well. So I will be doing that. So if you want more content like this or EV market content, be sure to subscribe to the channel, guys. I love interacting with you guys as well in the comments. Be sure to comment and drop a like on your way out. It helps me out a lot. Either way, have a good one.